Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another video with Psychology World, uh, the place for all your psychology and CBT needs. So today I want to talk a little bit about emotions. What are they? What's the difference between emotions and feelings? What theory is most reliable? Um, so it's a lot to get in today, so let's get started. Ekman is probably the best place to start the master of the micro-expression and the explorer of emotion. You might have seen his work quoted in the TV series, Lie to Me. You don't choose to become emotional. It happens to you. So the issue, if we want to improve our emotional life, is to introduce awareness into it. And that won't be easy. Because nature didn't make it easy for us, as did, I believe, as I said at the beginning, try to keep awareness from mucking it up. Ekman and Friesen theorized that there were six basic emotions to start with. In the early 1960s, they believed that anger, sadness, happiness, fear, disgust, and surprise were the underlying emotions that spanned humankind. In order to find out, he set out on a journey to Papua New Guinea, away from Western influence, to see if the indigenous people could recognise the emotional expressions of man. The indigenous people could infer what a person might feel in a given scenario. They were given scenarios such as, a child has died, and then they were given a set of emotional expressions so that they could see if they could pick the right appropriate facial expression. So what's the difference between a basic emotion and a feeling? Well, for Ekman, emotions were the basic reactions of people across cultures. He has a long list of criteria for what an emotion is. I have attached a link that goes into more detail. The main ones I'm going to pick out are the following. Ekman believed that for something to be categorised as an emotion, it must have a quick onset. It must be, have distinctive universal triggers such as, someone eats gone off food, equals disgust facial reaction. It must have distinct physiology, the same changes across the body, across cultures, such as a change in increasing heartbeat in a fear response. He also suggested that they must have distinct thoughts, memories and images. Ekman started a new era in emotional research, and since his work started, there have been many added emotions. Ekman himself added disgust, shame, awe and relief, amongst many more. This view of there being basic emotions appears to suggest a multicultural, basic set of emotions, and sees the feelings as all the shades in between. Evolutionary psychology has investigated the function of these emotions in human development over the last 200,000 years. They would suggest that sadness is an evolutionary developed reaction for when an infant loses contact with their parental figure, causing sadness and crying. This, in turn, would hopefully return the primary caregiver. There is also the theory that sadness brings others around us in a pro-social way, and therefore, when one is hurt and in need of support, other humans empathically feel sadness and support them. Anger is seen as the emotion that helps us to keep social order. The idea is that we would punish others if they were acting antisocially or not being fair. It would have also allowed us to get to food that was out of reach or hard to get to. This, at first, would cause frustration and then anger to break, break through the barriers to food. It's also seen as a natural response for when a loved one is attacked physically or emotionally. Disgust is seen as the emotion for keeping us away from disease and germs. If we smell gone off food, we respond in a disgust reaction, causing us to want to be sick, allowing us to get germs out of our body or encouraging us not to engage with it in the first place. The problem with many of these theories is that they are hypotheses that are hard to find objective truths for. Emotions are complex reactions that involve physiological, neurological and behavioural changes. 
One thing that is also extremely hard to measure is how the brain integrates all these changes into the experience you feel in the moment. The brain is mixing many different signals to give us a general sense of what is going on. To show how complex this is, a recent study showed there were 27 emotions. This study got people to watch lots of videos and to rate their emotional experience. As you can see, they have placed each emotion in a 2D space where they are positioned meaningfully in relation to the similar emotions. They have also been given a rating on their affective dimension. For instance, an emotion might vary on its ability to make you want to approach or avoid. It might vary in how certain the emotion makes you feel, or how pleasant an emotion is. In a later video, I will break down how CBT would look at emotions and its link with cognition. Thank you very much for listening. Again, if you'd like to see more videos, please do click the like and subscribe button.